corporate and political scandals have been prevalent throughout the history and consistently causing immeasurable levels of harm to society as a whole. This can be related to the corporate governance failure. Salam sejahtera, my name is Sean Christine Badai and I'll be presenting about the introduction of this scandal. Ruajah Steel was incorporated in 1982 as a joint venture between the Terengganu State Government, Heavy Industries Corporation Malaysia, and a Japanese company, Nippon Steel Corporation. It was originally planned to be the national steel maker, along with the initiative towards the modernization of heavy industries in Malaysia under Tun Dr. Mahathir Muhammad's regime. Throughout the initial years of its operation, Perwaja unendingly faced many huge losses and was followed by other issues such as the worldwide recession in the mid-1980s, appreciation of the yen, and weak demands for steel. This situation causing Nippon Steel Corporation to pull out from the project. In the year 1988, the government brought in Eric Chia to take over the position of CEO with the hope that he will improve the performance of the company. Despite the restructuring and improvement efforts, Perwaja's performance is still not improving. In fact, the company is facing a huge loss amounting 2.5 billion ringgit and was crippled by additional debts amounting 5.7 billion ringgit. And according to the internal report of Perwaja Steel, there was a lot of allegations such as misuse of funds, suspicious contract and dishonest accounting records. Salam sejahtera, my name is Maya Ivana Papolo, reporting the unethical issues involved in Perwaja Steel. Perwaja look like no more than shining example of a politically conceived, commercially questionable and poorly executed enterprise that predictably fell, despite lavish funding, a robust economy much of the time, and protections from competing imports in the form of both tariffs and quotas, the company was never able to produce steel profitably. It suffered from chronic operating problems and a crushing debt loan, including steep foreign exchange losses on heavy borrowing abroad. One of the major issues that caused other internal issues is the issues of directorship in Perwaja. The corporate governance standards are very low in Perwaja, where the board of directors in Perwaja is not given any roles in the operations and business. Besides that is none other than political interference in Perwaja. The involvement has been shown when former Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir brought in his friend Eric Chia. Since then, Perwaja continuously encountered several problems. Although both internal and external reports confirmed that the company was black white, almost nothing was done to bring the culprits to justice and recover the funds. There are actually quite a number of lessons that we can learn from this case in order to reduce the likelihood of scandal like Perwaja Steel from occurring again in the future. The first one is when a company is selecting or appointing the board of director, the company should only appoint members of the board of directors that are qualified and reliable meaning that the board of directors could provide direction for the organization. Other than that, the selected board of directors should also be able to perform internal control measures, for example, a strict supervision, a proper password usage are being implemented, and installing security software for an early prevention from fraud. Next is the appointment of audit committee among the professional accountants. The individuals that are selected should be capable of monitoring the internal control process, also overseeing the financial reporting and disclosure process. The audit committee should regularly challenge the management and auditors to ensure that the company has proper anti-fraud system and control in place to detect any possible fraud and that investigations are conducted if fraud is detected. Lastly, which I personally think is a very important lesson, is the company needs to be audited. Why? Because it is compulsory for every entity that are registered under the company's act must get their books of account audited every single year. There are many inaccurate records and hundreds of million in Malaysian ringgit in apparently authorized and one-sided contract between the Perwaja Steel and Board of Worker and Foreign Corporation. Nevertheless, it is more important to learn the lesson from this scandal to guide us prevent or reduce the reoccurrence of such events in the future. Last but not least, although the case demonstrates serious management of the company, its failure cannot be easily understood without paying attention to the broader social, economic and political context of the case.